Hello, my name is John Sayer, Technical Marketing Manager, Civil Infrastructure here at Autodesk. Today I'd like to take you through part two of four of our virtual reality create, creation using the AEC collection. This is VR level one, drone to VR. It's what I'm, it's what I'm calling it. Um, it's basically the first level of VR that I could think of that you might want to use a VR experience to experience the existing conditions of a project or maybe a certain phase of a construction project and let people not only in your office but other offices experience that VR also. This is a four-part series and again we're in part two of four and what the, the product from the AEC collection we'll be using today is InfraWorks and I've always talked about InfraWorks being an aggregator of data so we can bring all of our information in that we want to see in that virtual environment into InfraWorks and that's where we're going to put it all together and then we'll push that information out to 3ds max so let's get started so in this session we're going to mostly be inside of InfraWorks so the first thing we need to do is we need to use model builder so that we can locate our project and get a model created very quickly and if you've ever used model builder you know that it gives us that information very very quick so I'm going to use model builder here and we're going to type in the location of my project so I'm going to type in Boulder City, Nevada. So it's, you can see it right here. And it brings me to Boulder City. Now I'm going to change to my aerial view so I can see it a little bit better. And the project that we're going to be referencing today is actually sitting right in this area. All right. So I'm just going to simply draw a rectangle for my AOI. And I'll pull this area right here. We can make it a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. And I'll go ahead and give it a name. We're just going to call this uh, Boulder uh, City, and we'll call it again. All right, and I'm going to I can put it in whatever group I want here. Um, we'll just put it in the default group as it's set, and I'll hit Create Model. Now it's going to go out. It's it's gone out to the the, the cloud, and it's pulling information for my roads, my buildings. It's going to give me Bing imagery, and it's going to give me USGS elevations. All right, so it does take just a second, eh, 30 seconds to a minute for you to get that model. So I'll go ahead and close Model Builder here and I'll scroll up so I can see the top of my dashboard. You can see it goes ahead and it populates right here. So I'll select that, that model that we just created and it'll go ahead and it'll open up. All right, and it does take a minute or so for it to go ahead and populate here. So once the model's open, we've only really got a couple of steps that we need to make inside of InfraWorks in order to get us closer to our VR experience. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing the current Bing imagery that InfraWorks has provided. And you can see there is uh, there are some the bridges and everything that are already here. But our drone data is a little bit tighter. So we're gonna we're gonna use that for building our surface and generating or actually applying an image that would be what I like to call a what is there today image so that we can see what is there today all right because the Bing image may not be as up-to-date as what's out there right now so first thing we need to do is we need to just drag in the RCS file that we had generated for us inside of recap photo all right so I look at my folder structure here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab that n dot RCS file and drop it on the screen Right, it comes in and you'll see it's set to the coordinate system that I need to be set to. So I'm just going to hit close and refresh. And it's going to apply that point cloud. Now, the point cloud that comes in, you're not going to be able to see all of it because we need to add one more step here. And that's we need to generate a surface here in InfraWorks. And then you'll be able to see all of the point cloud that we had brought in. In order to do that inside of InfraWorks, what we need to do is go up here to our InfraWorks icons and select point cloud terrain all right now we can go through and change some of these processing rules uh, for the ground for linear features for vertical features in this particular instance uh, this is a VR virtual environment that we're going to be going into um, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect and I don't mean that to say that we don't want it to be as close to perfect as we can we can't we do but in this particular instance, we can leave these rules optimum, all right? And you can go through, and I could do a whole session on what each one of these rules changes whenever you're creating that surface. So today, for the, for the sake of time, we're going to just leave them optimum. 
and we'll leave everything alone, um, leave them all default. So we would just hit start processing. Now, once we hit start processing, and I'll close this dialog, then it takes about 15 minutes, and you've got a surface that's generated from this cloud itself. So in order to show you this in this video, I'm going to go ahead and go back and open up another model where I've already got the surface built so that we don't waste 15 to 20 minutes of your time. So I'm going to open up this BC bypass model that I've already generated. Now again, the only thing that I've done uh, kind of behind the scenes is I went ahead and let it process that surface. So like I said, it does take about 15 minutes in order to generate that, that surface. So it's going to go ahead and save the snapshot from the, old, the, the other model that we had open, and it's going to open up this model that we've got the surface and everything in. Now, if we take a look here, we'll be able to see a lot more of our point cloud than we could see before. And that's because it's generated a surface inside of here from that point cloud. All right, so in this particular instance, this is what we're really focusing on, is the area that we flew for the drone. You can zoom in and look. It looks very nice. The surface looks nice. Um, and we're able to start to look at it and make additional design decisions. Um, from this, but we want to be able to experience this and, and actually teleport around on top of this surface and take a look at it. Maybe look at the edge of this bridge. Uh, maybe walk or teleport underneath here and, and take a look at this bridge. And in the VR environment, it just immerses you in your project. So that's where we want to be. So what we're going to bring in is everything that you see here. And I'm actually going to bring this building and this roadway in also. So the next step here in InfraWorks is to export a 3D model. Now, we go over here in our menu, and select Settings and Utilities. That's where you're going to find Explore or Export 3D Model. We'll go ahead and export that 3D model. There's a couple of things you need to kind of take note of here. I'm going to export this as a bounding box. You can do it by a polygon if you like. And just, I'm going to build this a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and select here and just pull down my bounding box. Double click, and it gives me the area that I've selected. Now you can make this area, I mean, bring in the area that you want, okay? I just, I could have actually taken the entire model, but I just want to keep my VR um, experience, the data for that, I want to keep it um, as relatively compact as I can because it's going to give me a better experience. So I'm going to go down here and make sure that the target coordinate system is set to where it needs to be, and it should be um, out of the gate. If it's not, you can go ahead and select it here and select the target coordinate system from this list, or you can hit the world here, and you can pick it from all of the coordinate systems that are inside of here. Now, the offset, this is where we need to change this to user-defined, and we need to take out these decimal places. All right, this does us no good in 3ds Max, so we need to take those out. We want to go ahead and select multiple files. That way it breaks up the different FBX files. So we're going to have one for buildings, which is that building right here. All right. And that came in from InfoWorks, by the way. It's going to bring in the ground, which is the surface, basically. All right. And that's it. So we're going to go ahead and set our location of where that's going to go. That's where you start. This is where you start to build out that folder system. So I'm going to go out here to my folder. And I'll create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it FBX out from InfraWorks. You can name it whatever you want. Um, this is just what I've come up with. So I'm going to go ahead and select that folder. And these options here on the bottom, you can leave the first two checked, export materials and textures, and then merge objects with the same texture. You can take off the large FBX file support. It, it really doesn't matter um, that I've seen whether you have this checked or not. Um, so I just I just leave it unchecked. And I go ahead and hit export. Now it's going to take it just uh, maybe two or three minutes here, and it's going to go ahead and export those files out, and they will populate inside of our folder system that we've created. Now, while that's exporting, think about everything that you might want to bring into a 3D contextual model that you're going to get from InfoWorks. So we could actually bring in Revit models, we could bring in utilities, we could bring in all kinds of information so that you could visually see and again start to make design decisions or start to make uh, maybe decisions on existing construction that you're, you're trying to 
uh, work through. Like in this particular instance, there could be a culvert or there could be something that wasn't quite working the way that they thought it should in design. And we're going to be able to experience that type of information inside of our VR model. And it's not just one office, all right? Don't, don't think, don't kind of bottleneck yourself down to that. Think if you have multiple offices, all right, we can put this information out on the cloud anywhere and you can download it and everybody can, can look at the same experience and start to, uh, you know, teleport around, uh, go to different hotspots that are, that are built in or go to different spots in the virtual experience that you're having problems, the troubled areas. And again, make design decisions uh, that you might not necessarily fully understand if you're just looking at a, a 2D page or plan set or even the 3D contextual model. It just immerses you into your project. So what did we just export? If I look here in Windows Explorer, you can see my FBX out from InfraWorks file. And I've got my two FBX files, my buildings and my ground. So that's what we need to bring into 3ds Max, which is the next step or part three of four of this series. So with that, we'll go ahead and end this part. That's everything that we need to do here inside of InfraWorks. Um, in order to take it to the next uh, part of the workflow. So I thank you for watching, and I hope everybody has a great day. And look for part three of four in the same playlist that you found this on YouTube. Thank you.